My name is Crystal Chick and I'm the statewide hunter outreach coordinator for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. And I'm Jenny Sednick. I came out on uh, one of my first hunts uh, to just experience the day. Okay Jenny, so now we're going to start, go ahead and field dress her. We're going to start off just by putting on our gloves. So this is the knife we'll start with. In here we also have a bone saw and this saw will help us when we get up to the rib cage to cut through that and then we'll go ahead and probably actually cut through the pelvis on her as well that'll open her up even more so we can get her cooled down as quick as possible mm -hmm. the three things that can ruin our meat is heat moisture and dirt so we're going to try and avoid those three things the other thing we're going to make sure that just one of us is working a knife at, at a time uh, we only want one knife out so that if we're moving around or we kneel down we're going to make sure that we're being safe and not accidentally kneeling on a knife so we'll have one knife out at a time one of us running the knife that way we don't have to worry about fingers and, and everything getting in the way okay so we'll go ahead and come up this way and then i'm going to actually switch sides with you so if you can hold this leg that's perfect right there okay Okay, the first cut that we're actually gonna make is gonna be right here in the pelvis area. And you always wanna make sure you have a good sharp knife when we're making these cuts. Okay, we're gonna go all the way down here to the bone. All right, so one of the things that we need to leave on the animal is we need evidence of sex left completely intact. Um, and it needs to be attached to the animal. Since we have a female here, we have the mammary glands. What we're gonna do is cut right up the abdomen, right between the mammary glands, and that's gonna leave evidence of sex on both of the hind quarters. That way, after we quarter her, we'll still have evidence of sex on two pieces. We're gonna make a cut right here from the pelvis all the way up to the sternum right here. Now this is where we need to be really careful not to cut too deep because we don't want to puncture the stomach. So this is, there's two different ways that we can do this. One way is that we can put our fingers under the hide like this and pull the hide up and then put the knife upside down and cut forward like this. That's going to hold the stomach away from the hide as we cut. The other thing we can do is use this gut hook where we can just put the hook under the skin and come up to the sternum as well. Okay. So once you're through the hide, you'll actually feel your fingers go through mm -hmm. under the hide, and then that's when we'll be able to just work our way up slowly, and so we don't puncture any of the internal organs. And I'm kind of pushing down on the stomach with my fingers as I'm working the knife forward and making sure the tip of the knife doesn't get below my fingers to where we puncture that stomach. Once you hit that bone up there, then we are up to the sternum, okay? So now we can start seeing some of the internal organs here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use our knife to go ahead and cut the hide all the way up to the neck, and then we'll get our bone saw to actually cut through the ribs. Okay, okay I'm gonna switch sides here. Okay, so here's where I'm just gonna cut the hide all the way up. And I can use the gut hook a little bit for that, depending on how thick the hide is. And we're cutting all the way down to the bone. Okay. We're gonna cut up to the neck here as well. And we want to cool this meat off as quick as we can. So the more we can open her up, the quicker it'll allow for that. So at this point, we'll need our saw to go ahead and open up the ribs a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to take our bone saw and we're going to go ahead and open up this rib cage. Now this is again where we have to be careful because we don't want to puncture the stomach or anything like that. So we want to make sure that we're not going too deep. And then also we still have a lot of internal organs up here in the chest cavity. So of course we have the heart and the lungs. Okay, so we're through all the ribs. So you can see that that opened up the chest cavity real nice so that we can, it'll help with our field dressing but also help cool the animal off. 
So now that we have this cut um, up through the ribs, we want to grab the esophagus and the windpipe, and we want to cut it up, up as high as we can. And then that's kind of, kind of work as our handle as we start pulling the organs towards the back. So you just reach down there until you feel the esophagus and the windpipe. So now I've got a hold of the esophagus and the windpipe, and I'm just going to cut across the top of that. So now as I pull on this, there's gonna be a lot of connective tissue and you can use your knife just to cut that connective tissue away from the ribs. But before we do that, um, we gotta come back here to the back. We're gonna cut around the anus so that <clears throat> as we pull the esophagus and everything down, that we can actually push the intestines back up to pull everything out at once, okay? So we're gonna cut right here around the anus, trying to be careful not to puncture into the intestines. So once we've cut all the way around the anus, I think we're gonna go ahead here and just cut the skin down closer to the pelvis. And you can kind of feel how that pelvis is starting to open up. Mm -hmm. We could then use our bone saw to cut through this pelvis to open it up even more. Um, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and try and get these organs out before we cut this, just so as we're using our saw, we don't accidentally puncture the bladder or the stomach or any of that. So we're gonna go ahead and work on getting everything out. So we're gonna come back up here to the top. We talked a little bit about the esophagus and how that's gonna work kind of as a handle for us. So we're gonna grab the esophagus and start pulling back here. You can see all the organs are just starting to come as well. The one thing we haven't cut yet is the diaphragm, which connects to the ribs all the way around the animal. So you can kind of see this wall right here that connected, or rather separated, the heart and the lung area and the stomach area down here. And we have to cut that all the way around. So we're gonna put this down and move the stomach out of the way, and we're gonna cut this diaphragm. And we're gonna cut as close to the ribs as we can, making sure we're not, again, puncturing the stomach. The other thing is we want to be careful when we start getting down low because right behind, underneath the stomach, right at the ribs, is where our tenderloins are. And we want to make sure as we're cutting that away that we don't puncture and cut our tenderloins. I'm going to cut it again a bit on this side. And start pulling in here and cutting, just cutting this away. And we can start kind of dropping it off to the side here as well to get it out of the way. A lot of this connective tissue can pull on and it'll come loose as well. I'm just being careful again here not to puncture anything we don't want on our meat. And you can start to see the tenderloins right here. I'm gonna make sure we don't puncture those because that's a great cut of meat. So we're just gonna to continue to pull this out, cutting anything that's connected or just pulling it until it comes loose. Okay, so we've got most of it out the front here. So now we need to pull the stuff that's here in the back. And this is where you wanna try not to puncture that bladder. And if we're cut all the way around. There. Okay. 
at that point you can just pull everything off to the side. Okay, so at this point we've got all of the organs out, so we can go ahead and get the bone saw and we're just gonna cut through the pelvis. Again, that's just gonna open her up even more to help cool down the meat. And we left our evidence of sex and we have mammary glands on both sides. Mm -hmm. And when we skin her out and quarter her, we're gonna wanna make sure we leave that evidence of sex on each of the quarters. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're good to go. Okay, so that's it for field dressing the animal. We've got all the internal organs out. We split the pelvis and we've got everything opened up really nice so she can start cooling down. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and throw the carcass tag on. We are going to make a small incision right here in the hawk with our knife. And then we can zip our zip tie right through here. And if you remember before, we even started field dressing the animal. We, um, we avoided our carcass tag. And again, to avoid that carcass tag, we signed it, we notched out the month, the day, and then the fact that this one was a female. Okay, now we've got a carcass tag attached and we can put it in the truck and go back to the barn and quarter her out.